Hello and welcome to Tech Deals Battle of the Budget Builds Ryzen 3 2200G versus the Pentium G5400. Which should you build or buy for a budget gaming PC? Now, I have built both of these computers here in previous videos on my channel. Link to those down in the description below, along with links to Amazon and Newegg for all these various parts. Those are affiliate links. They do support the channel. If you find this video helpful and useful, please remember to use those while shopping. Now, at first glance, many of you are going to say, what are you talking about? Isn't it obvious the Ryzen 3 is a much better choice than the Pentium G? Maybe. Maybe not. It depends upon your budget, what you're putting together, and whether or not you're using a dedicated graphics card. Let me save you all a bunch of trouble right up front. If you are not going to put a graphics card in, if you're using integrated graphics only, then there is absolutely no comparison here whatsoever. The Ryzen 3 2200G is far and away the better value for the money for a gaming PC than anything from Intel. The integrated graphics are just night and day. There's no comparison. But if you're going to install a dedicated graphics card, it's not quite so clear cut. And we'll talk about the value equation and the cost differences here in this video. First, I briefly want to talk about the Pentium G5400 configuration. It is a two core, four thread, 3.7 gigahertz processor retailing for about $65. It's in this $300 build here that I put together, as I said before, link down below. Now that $300 price is eight gigabytes of DDR4-2400 single channel, it's a single memory stick. I actually tested this with dual channel RAM because frankly you should, and it's only $10 more to, to upgrade that to two four gig sticks. Now the Ryzen 3 2200G, the build on my channel is 400 because it's in a nicer case with a nicer components. You can build it for less than that. Put it in this case with lower end power supply and a few other things. And it's only about $30 more expensive, all else being equal. The motherboards are about the same price. So the CPU is about $30 more. However, they're not really that close because in the as tested configuration, we have eight gigabytes of DDR4-3200 in the Ryzen 3 2200G in dual channel configuration. And that is $30 more expensive. So all else being equal, we're looking at $310 for the Pentium G5400 and we're looking at $370 for the Ryzen 3 2200G as tested without a graphics card. If you put the graphics card in, of course, that just raises them by the same amount. That $60 price difference is about 20%. 20% is not a small difference. Of course, the Ryzen 3 is faster, but for 20% more, it should be faster. Is it worth it? As I said before, without a dedicated graphics card, yes, without any doubt at all, I would spend $370 to build the Ryzen 3 2200G for gaming. It's just night and day. It's like 250% faster than the Intel integrated graphics. But if you're going to go with a dedicated graphics card, especially a low-end one, the Pentium G5400 might surprise you. Perhaps a more interesting question is how does the Pentium G5400 with this dedicated card compare to the Ryzen 3 2200G without it? Well, you can do that because I've got those results in this video. We tested with and without the dedicated card on the Ryzen 3 versus the G5400 with it. I am not including the integrated graphics results. They're different settings. It just, it makes no sense. Gaming on integrated graphics, I've done that video. You can go check it in the playlist if you want to see it. But yeah, skip that at all costs. If you're going to go with integrated graphics, there's really only one choice. Something that is not in this video that you might want to consider. If you are looking at the results with the dedicated graphics card, consider a Ryzen 5 2400G without it. A Ryzen 5 2400G has Vega 11 graphics. It's about 30% faster than the Vega 8 that is in here four cores, eight threads versus four cores, four threads, and a faster clock speed as well, a couple hundred megahertz faster. It's about $65 more expensive, but that's less than the cost of this graphics card. So if you're looking at the results of this video with this card in the Ryzen 3, consider that for less than the cost of that combination, you can have the Ryzen 5, very similar, if not totally exactly the same results as this with the Vega 11 graphics, and you can have an eight thread processor. That's like having a previous generation i7 four core eight thread chip for $159. That's a crazy value. Now, before we jump into the benchmarks, I want to make one final point about the Pentium G5400. In my original video, the parts overview and building this for $300, I basically said, who should consider buying this? And at the time, I basically said, no one. It's a stupid processor and nobody should buy it. I might have been a little premature in saying that because when you watch the results you're about to see, 
Depending upon what you expect out of your computer, it actually is not totally crazy, especially if you're not in the United States and the price difference is larger in whatever country you live in. Now, certainly here, I would still honestly go with a Ryzen 3 four cores. It's not that much more money. If you can swing it, it makes more sense. But the Pentium G5400 did better than I thought it was going to, and it was very snappy and responsive. Running Windows, running Windows updates, installing programs, installing drivers, just using your computer, launching web browsers. The Pentium G5400 is very quick and very responsive, and it uses less expensive RAM, and it's just, all things considered, it's not as bad of a choice as I thought it was. So, fair warning to the upcoming results, they were a little surprising. The first game we're testing is Overwatch High Detail 720p. I'm doing something a bit different here. Because we have three different results, I'm putting all three benchmarks up on the screen at the same time, along with the chart. This should hopefully make the video much shorter. The downside to doing it this way, if you're watching this on a cell phone, you probably can't read a whole lot of the text on the screen at the moment. That's what you have a computer for, hopefully. Otherwise, why are you watching this video? I guess unless you're building your first ever computer. Now the two GT1030 results are on the left hand side of the screen, Ryzen on top, G5400 on the bottom, and then the one without the graphics card with the Vega 8 integrated graphics is in the upper right hand corner above the chart. If you look at the chart itself, you'll notice that a Ryzen 3 2200G with a GT1030 is faster than either of the other two configurations, but it should be. It's a whole lot more expensive. I do not recommend installing a GT1030 in a Ryzen 3 2200G. As I said before, get a Ryzen 5 2400G. It'll be pretty close to those results, if not always exactly the same. Looking at the other examples, however, notice how close that the Ryzen 3 2200G Vega 8 result is to the Pentium G5400 with the GT1030 is. They're really, really close. 85 frames per second on the G5400 with the GT1030 versus 82 frames per second on the Ryzen 3 2200G with the Vega 8 integrated graphics. That's not bad. And that's actually less expensive when you consider what it costs to put the added graphics card to the G5400. Of course, the Ryzen 3 with the graphics card is faster, but again, that's just here mostly to show you what it can do. The same thing is true of the 1% low and the 0.1% low. 48, 49, and 57, 58, they are neck and neck. And this is why I said at the beginning of the video, if you're planning on using integrated graphics, just get a Ryzen 3 2200G, because if you look at the other video I did with the integrated graphics of the G5400, they're atrocious. They're terrible in all respects. It's not, they're not even included here. They are so unbelievably bad. So we're not even discussing those. Moving on to Counter-Strike Global Offensive, we find a very, very different result. And this is why I test a variety of games. With the GT1030, the Pentium G5400 averaged 180 frames per second. The Ryzen 3 2200G with Vega 8 graphics only, in quotes, did 130 frames per second. Now, some of you may look at this and go, holy smokes, 130 frames per second is spectacular. That's completely playable. And it is. Don't make any bones about the fact that that is totally playable. But if you are a serious competitive player, if you love this game and you want your frame rate, I would like to point out that that is a 50 FPS difference. That is not small or minor. While a G5400 with a GT1030 is a bit more expensive, not hugely so, but it is more expensive than the Ryzen 3 2200G with Vega 8 graphics, not a huge amount, and that is a monster performance improvement. The 1% low, 85 to 103, and the 0.1% low was 52 to 66. That's a difference, and it's enough of a difference that if you're a serious CSGO player, yeah, I would buy a Pentium G5400 for this over the Ryzen 3, even though with the adding graphics card, it's slightly more expensive. Notice that when we put the GT1030 into the Ryzen 3, it does make a difference. And in fact, the 1% and 0.1% low numbers are the highest on the chart, but the average is still lower because the clock speed and the IPC instruction per clock cycle is still lower than the G5400. And this game, frankly, just doesn't make use of four true processing cores the way, say, Overwatch and some other games do. So which one is right for you does depend upon what you're doing with your computer. Before I filmed all these benchmarks, I thought the Ryzen 3 2200G would win every benchmark in a walk. I didn't expect to see this big of a gap. So that's why we benchmark. 
League of Legends 1080p Very High Detail. Ryzen 3 2200G with the Vega 8 integrated graphics runs this very, very well. 110 frames per second average, 82 1% low, 64.1% low. These are great results, except the Pentium G5400 with the $90 GT 1030 in it does 142, 104, and 81, absolutely crushing the Vega 8 integrated graphics. Again, a reminder that the G5400 with the GT1030 is slightly more expensive, but not much. A couple of lunches or a dinner more expensive. And if this is the sort of game that you play, that is a noticeable difference. Now, of course, the Ryzen 3 2200G with the GT1030 in it is faster than those, except for the 0.1% low. But again, that, that's way, way, way more expensive. A Ryzen 5 2400G, just because the Vega 11 graphics would make more sense. Again, don't buy a $90 graphics card to install on a Ryzen 3. That makes no sense. But the G5400 again shows it's much stronger than perhaps many of us thought. Grand Theft Auto V 720p high detail. As you watch this, you'll notice I'm in the same area of the map doing roughly the same things, throwing grenades and causing a ruckus as I usually do. Just like in some of my previous comparison videos, I run around the city, I drive for 10 minutes, I cause a lot of ruckus, I try to keep it to the same general areas in order to make the benchmark as consistent as possible, because the performance of GTA 5 varies dramatically depending upon where you drive, so I do try to keep it fairly consistent. The Ryzen 3 2200G with a GT 1030 in it is of course the fastest option here at 84 frames per second. But let's be honest here, 78 frames per second is not far behind, and the 1% and 0.1% lows are neck and neck. The Ryzen 3 2200G with Vega 8 integrated graphics is good. 62 frames per second average is not bad. 45 1% low is okay. It's not great, but it's okay. 39 is also okay. It was smooth and playable on all three configurations. But again... The G5400 with a $90 graphics card blows away the Ryzen 3 2200G with Vega 8 integrated graphics for not much more money. Yeah, four processing cores is nice. Yes, I absolutely agree that in the long run, I'd rather have four cores. But if this is your budget and this is your limit, there are advantages to having the G5400. One simple example, dedicated VRAM. The GT1030 has two gigabytes of dedicated VRAM, so it is not using any of the system RAM, the eight gigs of system RAM. The Ryzen 3 2200G result here, keep in mind there's only six gigs of VRAM because two of the eight gigs of VRAM is being used by the Vega 8 graphics, so you're limited to just six gigs of VRAM. You can see I've got it up there in the upper right-hand corner, six gigs of RAM versus eight in the others. It has eight installed, but two gigabytes of it's being used for Vega 8. Let me be very, very clear here. I am not advocating any of these solutions for the latest and greatest AAA games. GTA 5 is demanding and it is nice, but it's a couple years old. If you want to play the new Battlefield 5 that's coming out, if you want to play Ghost Recon Wildlands or Far Cry 5, no, you shouldn't buy any of these. A Ryzen 5 2600 with a GTX 1060 would be a superior experience on so many levels it's not even funny. These are for older games or budget titles or esports titles or basically the kind of stuff I'm showing you here. So don't think that just because it's good performance here, you're going to be playing the new Battlefield 5 at 1080p high detail and having a good experience because you won't. I would like a show of hands from the audience of how many people would have expected a two core, four thread chip to do this well with a $90 graphics card. 70 frames per second average in the new 1.0 World of Tanks graphical update versus 52 on the Vega 8 integrated graphics. 44 to 34 on the 1% low and 34 to 30 on the 0.1% low. Yes, of course, the Ryzen 3 2200G with the GT1030 on the 1% and 0.1% low are higher. You have four cores, it lifts up the bottom, but it's not faster in the average, 64 versus 70. Truthfully, World of Tanks is playable on a wide variety of computers. If you have anything remotely reasonable from the past couple of years with a remotely reasonable graphics card, you'll find some setting or configuration that will work. This is 1080p high detail, several years old machines, several years old graphics cards, 720p medium, and you can certainly play this game. 
but we're comparing 1080p high. And yeah, the G5400 again comes out on top. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with that big huge red button directly below. Questions and comments in the comment section, check the links in the video description. Links to my uh, build videos and playlists for both of these computers. Links to Amazon and Newegg will be down there. Please check those out. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video.